Hello, and welcome back to Bamboo Batu. Today we're talking about bamboo in Japan. Japan is a small island nation, relatively small, in the far east, off the coast of China and uh, Korea. It's a pretty small country, smaller than the state of California, but with more people than um, most countries. It has about 125 million people. So that's a lot of people <clears throat> on a pretty small island or chain of islands, actually. Uh, lots of people, lots of uh, really nice cars. I love, I love my Toyota. And lots of bamboo, great place for bamboo. Lots of native bamboo there. Lots of opportunities for growing bamboo. It is a colder climate than many bamboo growing nations, such as the Philippines or Vietnam or Indonesia, uh, those tropical countries where they grow the tropical clumping bamboo. Uh, but in Japan, it's more of a temperate climate. It does get snow regularly in the winter. And so it's much better suited for the cold, hardy, temperate bamboos, which generally are running bamboos as opposed to the clumping bamboos that you get in the warmer climates. Some of the best bamboo examples in Japan are, is, is the, uh, Arashiyama bamboo grove in Kyoto. I regret to say that I have not been there, but if you Google bamboo forest, there's a really good chance that you'll find many pictures of this particular bamboo grove showing up. It is, um, mostly made up of Moso bamboo. That's Phyllostachys edulis. It's a running bamboo species. It's the species of bamboo that's most commonly used in China for building materials, for flooring, for bamboo cutting boards, bamboo clothing, most commercial bamboo products that you see on the market uh, in the last 10 or 20 years uh, have come from uh, Moso bamboo, not from Japanese Moso as in the picture, but Chinese Moso, but same, same species of bamboo. Here's another good shot of some bamboo in the Nagasaki district. This is actually a friend of mine from UCLA. We went to school together many years back and I could set up a whole nother series of videos to tell stories about this character, but um, I'm not gonna do that right now. Um, but yeah, some interesting stories to be sure. This is him on a uh, kind of a ninja bamboo expedition on an on a um, remote island in the Nagasaki district. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a maverick for sure. And that could be Moso bamboo. It might be Japanese timber bamboo, some, some species of phyllostachys. Uh, it's, it's hard to identify from the picture, but I would guess it's one of those two, but it's hard to be sure. Um, a common species of bamboo in, in Japan is like I said, Japanese timber bamboo. That's Phyllostachys bambusoids. It's also called uh, Madake. That's M-A-D-A-K-E. Uh, it's usually pronounced Madake. It looks like Medake. But um, anyway, it's more reliable if we use the scientific name Phyllostachys bambusoids because that is specific to the species. Um, it's commonly called Japanese timber bamboo, but again, that's kind of a general name. That's a common name, but what somebody means by Japanese timber could be different than what someone else means. But this is most likely that species of bamboo growing in this picture. Again, it's a little bit hard to identify from the photo, but it's a beautiful uh, example of a Japanese garden with some nice bamboo. It's a younger, uh, younger um, Madake bamboo in the picture. It does get pretty big. It gets about 60 feet tall. The cones will get maybe four, maybe five inches in diameter. But uh, very, uh, very elegant, striking uh, ornamental bamboo. Pseudosasa japanica is a very common species of Japanese origin. It also grows in, in Taiwan and China, I think as far down as uh, Vietnam. But uh, as you see from the name, Pseudosasa japanica, there's definitely a connection with Japan. It's commonly called the arrow bamboo. The samurai warriors used to use these uh, combs, these bamboo poles, to make their spears because they're so strong and straight and thin and they made for great spears. Nowadays, we prefer to use bamboo for nonviolent purposes. So I do not recommend making spears or engaging in samurai warfare, but you know, if that's your proclivity, then, you know, just don't, uh, just don't tell me about it. Uh, the genus Sasa is very common and endemic to Japan. 
It is um, a uh, it's a genus of dwarf bamboo. This is some of it growing in its native habitat somewhere in Japan. I'm not sure where this picture came from, and I'm not sure which species of sasa it is, but I'm pretty sure it's some species of sasa. Um, small bamboo. It's a running bamboo. It spreads, makes really cool ground cover. Um, but yeah, as you can see in the picture, it, it spreads pretty um, pretty successfully. Um, but it grows in harmony with the forest uh, in the shady understory of the of the mixed conifer forest. And yeah, it's uh, lots of interesting species from from this genus. Here's some sasa vechi, popular um, ornamental bamboo species. Uh, there's some snow in the picture that's snow down there. So it's definitely cold hardy. It's evergreen and it'll stay green in the winter, but it will get, uh, kind of like these little burns around the edges of the leaves to create this striped effect. Um, most of the year, <clears throat> the leaves are solid green, but in the winter when the, uh, the low temperatures causes the, um, the kind of burning on the edge to get that striped effect, which, um, technically it's damage to the leaf, but it does create a pretty cool, uh, visual effect, uh, ornamental effect. And you could cut that back in the spring to promote fresh growth, or you could leave it as is. That's up to you. Uh, here's another stripe. These are natural stripes of the bamboo leaf. Um, Sasea, um, it's a different genus, but it's close it's closely related to Sasa, uh, Sasella or Sasea. Um, Masumania albiostriata is a, um, yeah, albino, albino striped bamboo. Um, it's a very small dwarf bamboo and it only gets maybe a foot or two tall, uh, makes a nice ground cover. Um, very beautiful, nice coloration on that. Um, so yeah, these, these dwarf bamboos, they spread, uh, very effectively. So if you grow it and you want to have some kind of containment strategy to keep it from going out of control unless you just have unlimited space for gardening, which most people don't have unlimited space. Um, but it does, it does spread really nicely. And again, if you cut it back after the winter, um, that'll promote fresh growth and keep it looking most vibrant. Uh, but it tends to be evergreen. So even in the winter, it looks, it looks nice. Um, they are very cold hardy, cold hardy running bamboo. Uh, here's another example, Sasa Ramosa. This picture actually I took in Germany, the Berlin Botanical Gardens, nice slender leaves on this stuff. Um, it's another, another dwarf bamboo, um, kind of a good, good crown cover, um, growth habit. Uh, Shibatea Kamusaka. Um, I can't pronounce it perfectly, but I can spell it right. That is the correct spelling. Uh, it's another, um, shrubby bamboo from Japan. Uh, really cool, really unusual species of bamboo, uh, makes a great ornamental, makes a good hedge. It's got these really short stubby, um, uh, stems. You can't really build with it. Like most bamboo, you don't have those nice big poles, but it is, uh, very attractive. And if you prune it back, you can make, um, make a nice hedge with it but it is a runner and will spread if you're not careful and have some sort of containment method for it, either a rhizome barrier or a lot of people like to dig a little trench around the bamboo to monitor the, the rhizome expansion, the root, the root expansion. Uh, there's one of the most interesting species of bamboo out there. Uh, Sasa Kurulensis. <clears throat> there's a the little map in the corner, the Kuril islands you can see on the Northeast corner of Japan there. Um, some of those islands belong to Japan. Some of them belong to Russia and there's actually a territorial dispute between the two countries. And in that hot spot is where it's a cold spot. Actually, it's pretty cold up there, but in the politically, um, controversial zone there is where this bamboo species is native and it's very cold hardy. It gets cold up there for sure. It is the only bamboo species native to Russia. It is the bamboo species with the northernmost native habitat. So that's a cool little piece of bamboo trivia for you. Um, so yeah, if you live in a cold climate, if you want to grow bamboo in, in Toronto or Edmonton, uh, I do get a lot of email from people in Canada asking what species of bamboo to grow. 
this is one of your best bets. It is native to a very uh, high um, latitude. And uh, again, it's a, it's a short little dwarf bamboo with a running growth habit and nice evergreen leaves. So yeah, that's uh, a little bit about bamboo in Japan, some native species to Japan. Uh, bamboo is great in the Japanese garden. Here's some bamboo in a uh, Japanese garden. I can't quite tell you which species that is. Could be, could be temple bamboo, semi arundinaria fastuosa, but I'm not sure. Um, it is difficult to identify bamboo, even when you're up close and personal with it, it can be difficult to know the species and looking at it from a picture, uh, it's pretty hard, but that was, that was one guess of mine, but I'm not going to make any bets on that being temple bamboo, but it could be, uh, but yeah, bamboo is very important in Japanese culture. They've been using it for thousands of years. It's incorporated into their cuisine. Here's some uh, sushi with bamboo trays and bamboo chopsticks. They do eat uh, bamboo shoots in Japan also, and they use bamboo in their architecture and interior design with some striking, stunning effects. Um, that's just the perfect picture of Japanese Zen decor right there. I just, I just, yeah, I just want to cross my legs and chant home when I look at that picture. It's great. And that just about sums it up for Bamboo in Japan. Hope you've enjoyed this segment, found it interesting, stimulating, and educational. If so, let us know in the comments below. Tell your friends, share the link, subscribe to the page, do all that cool stuff, and we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye.